Hello and welcome to AMF Bolero Lanes here in beautiful Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brylow for the 10th annual Junior Hall of Fame tournament here. A great event put on by our friend Shannon Lubitsky. It's all about the kids, Phil. Well, they signed up as 99 doubles teams coming into today. Each one of those doubles teams is then paired up with an adult partner that's either a Hall of Famer or going to be a Hall of Famer really soon with the credentials they have. They bowl a couple of games of trios action, then they bowl some Baker trios action, then there's a bunch of eliminations. And now we're down to our final four teams in the Stepladder Finals. We're going to show you some opening hatch highlights as well, but then full semifinal and final matches, and it's going to be a great day of bowling out here on the lanes, especially with all the scholarship money these players are going for. Let's talk about some of the celebrities and PBA members that were here during this tournament today. Oh, you talk well, hey, let's go with Linda Barnes right now. I mean, USBC Hall of Famer. She came up for Texas, not just for this event, but for a JDRF fundraiser that we'll talk about during the show as well. Uh, Tony Roventini, Mr. 900. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Greenfield, a Hall of Famer in the state of Wisconsin, and along with a USBC Titleist. You're asking me to name so many. There are 99 <laughs> of them. They all have such great credentials, Van, that uh, you could tell how much all of these players are looking forward to bowling with the youth bowlers. Because not only do the youth bowlers look up to the adults, the adults kind of look up to these kids a little bit, knowing that, hey, I've got pressure on. I need yeah. to perform. The kids continue the sport, and boy, has our sport grown here. Time to get to some action, Phil, right? I'm pumped up. Let's get on the lanes. We got uh, some highlights of an opening match, and then we're going to get right into our semifinal match. You are watching the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament. Don't you go anywhere. Barbier is Italian N. Featured in OnMilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. Providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our Wall of Fame and our current specials at BPSMilwaukee.com. Here are the highlights of the opening match from the 2016 Junior Hall of Fame at AMF Bolero. Jerry Myers started off things for his team with a strike, followed up with two more by Justin Mickelson and Cody Weigel. Bo Brinning tries to get his team to keep pace with an opening strike, followed up with a strike by Adam Koch. Third frame, however, Steve Monson misses the head pin to the right. However, he did end up picking up the spare. Meanwhile, Team Mars just kept the strikes going. Had the initial string out to the front seven. As all three team members kept striking in this Baker format game. However, Team Brunig keeping it close with Brunig, Koch, and Monson all striking in their fourth, fifth, and sixth frames. Before Brunig ran into trouble in the seventh frame. Lucky to get the 10 out, but did convert the spare to keep his team within 30 pins. Mickelson with the first errant shot for Team Mars. Leaving the open frame in the eighth. With Weigel going high in the ninth, and Mars unable to capitalize on the strike in the tenth, left Team Mars at 241 after the first game. Meanwhile, Koch, Monson, and Brunig run the last five in this opening game, end up with a 254 game, and take the early lead in this two game total pin match. As the bowlers switched lanes on the pair to get ready for the second game of the match, the team captains talked to their young players and kept the strikes going early on. As the 
captains Brunig and Mars both started the first frame with a strike. And between both teams, five out of the first six shots in the pocket for strikes. With the match practically even in the fourth frame, Brunig puts 10 back while Jerry Mars steps up. And even with a great shot in the pocket, rings up the 10 pin. And then both teams struggling to get strikes the rest of the way out. Team Brunig kept filling in the frames, but for Team Mars, Cody Weigel in the sixth frame, the 2 8 10 combination for that team's first open of the game. Jerry Mars trying to get his team back on track, but can't get the messenger to take out the 10. And then the big opening for the team from the eighth frame, Justin Mickelson, the chop of the three off the 6 10, which basically let Team Brooding fill the last two frames and take home the victory in his opening match. Bo Brunig locks up victory with this spare. Jerry Mars, even with the closing strike, not enough for his team. As they take the loss, 458 to 427. Team Brunig advances. And our semifinal match between Team Jamrose and Team Brunig for the 2016 Junior Hall of Fame event at AMF Bolero will continue after this short break. Welcome back to AMF Bolero Lanes, the 10th annual Junior Hall of Fame tournament. It's been a long day of bowling, Joey. Finally, TV semifinals. The fun begins. Yes, it does. Get first, going here with Team Jamrose. First look at Mike Jamrose, left-hander out of the south side of Milwaukee. Oh, a little wicked lead there on not that the, opening not shot. Not the way you want to open up a match. Now I know it's a 2 4 8 10 for a righty. What would that right. be for a lefty? Let's see if we can do the math oh, quick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm more interested in the replay here and the light hit. Uh, it looked good coming off the hand. Well, you know, it could be a little bit of speed control for Mike, or uh, he may, may have to move his feet slightly left to get a little stronger angle of entry. And that's the way you make it. you got to hit it light on the cross, but leaves up to you know, you get rid of those nerves, you're on TV, under the lights, has a tendency to change things from time to time. You know, and, and that could be the case, but I'll tell you, both Mike and Bo here, they're, they're experienced veterans. I mean, Mike's in his 40s, and uh, he's it probably bowled hundreds of tournaments. So I don't think too many nerves. Over to Team Brunig and Bo Brunig here. Strong game, follow through to the right, that ball. Finished behind the eighth pin. Powerful. Just powerful. There, first look at the kids. Look at that pin action. Just exploding on the back end here. Back to Team Jamrose now. Looking at Adam Cook. At uh, Dylan, excuse me. Yeah, he's taking his time, composing himself. Probably taking a few deep breaths to let the tension release. Lots on the line here for these kids. Yeah, that's, a, that's a nice game physically. Just smooth, good follow through, no muscle through the swing. Slight miss of the target though. Couldn't knock out that seven pin. Little deflection upon entry there, and he had pins dancing around that seven, but no luck. No luck. And sometimes you need that out here. Good balance of skill and luck is a deadly combination. <laughs> Without the skill, you can be as lucky as you want. On, on some nights, though, it's uh, more luck 
than anything. Well, it, it seems that way, and we always remember the bad luck <laughs> or the bad breaks. We never tend to remember the, the lucky ones we carry. But. Over to Team Bruning. Here is Adam out of Sussex. A drink of water. And uh, he leaves nothing in the bag at release either. He's got no. some power. Nice long swing. Got away with it. Almost uh, looked like he was coming up through the head pin. If we check out the replay yeah, there. Yeah, late kick on the 4 and 10. But that's an early double. Over to Samantha Munch out of Oshkosh. Just a touch high on that lane and he's an ugly split. Looked like ball speed was a factor there. Let's check in with Phil Brylo who joins us late side. Phil, what's going on? Yeah, Van, you mentioned ball speed. Both these team captains, both Mike Jamrose, Bo Brunick, talking to other players during the practice before this match, reminding them that the lanes change pretty quickly on this Junior Hall of Fame oil pattern. Uh, during the qualifying rounds, we Taking saw some of these players moving in, in over fourth and fifth arrow quite quickly after four or five games of uh, Baker play earlier today. So they're going to be keeping an eye on lane transition. Happens pretty much in a hurry here on the 24 side of Bolero. And with this special oil pattern, it's going to happen even more. Thank you, Phil. Over to Steve Monson. So we'll have to keep an eye on that yeah, and see if, if we see some adjustments during the match. We get going here early. And Definitely an inside ooh. player, plenty of power. I'm going to tug to just a touch. Steve is 16 years old. Richfield, when he's not bowling. Baseball and golf. Hunting as well. Can't, I can't peg you as a, as a hunter. Uh, well, no, but I mean, I work six days a week, so the only hunting day I would have <laughs> during the cooler months would be Sundays, and, and that's family time. Right. You got to relax at some point. When but you're yes, not drilling up balls over right. there at Bowler's Pro Shop. But I have hunted. Oh. When I was a youngster, I hunted squirrel with my grandfather. <laughs> squirrel. In the woods, and they were up in the trees, and they'd make a stew afterwards. Team Jamrose hunting for a strike here. And he just annihilated the wreck with a can opener shot. I don't know what hit that seven pin. Maybe we'll get a look on it. Let's take a look at the replay here. Squirrel let's, let's hunting, see. huh? Well, something hit it. I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, squirrel hunting, yes. I could have said possum. Uh, oh, possum, sure. We'll using a motive primal fear, a new ball from our friends at Motive. Fertilized cover, good length, strong back end. That's two pretty shots in a row. We'll see if we have more here from AMF Bolero Lanes as the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament continues next. Barbiere's Italian Inn, featured in onmilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. Welcome back to AMF Bolero Lanes, the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Van McNeil alongside Joe Serrar. Just some of the prizes uh, that some of the kids are going to win here, Joey. Some early goodies yeah. prior to Christmas. Some hammer bowling balls, some 900 global three ball bags, and some pins from our friends at ontheball.com. Action continues here in the first round of the semifinals here. Well, he's smooth. Mm -hmm. Gets the job this time. Doesn't leave a light seven as he did his first shot. Trip that 10 pin. And a big double. Which Team Jamrose in desperate need of after opening in that first frame. Right, well they had opened in the first and third frames. So. Adam Cook out of Sussex. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that kind of looked like it was going to come high, but yeah. it kind of held pocket. And uh, again, they answer right back with a double. Look at the replay here. Pin action just. And that could be where he's playing on the lane. You know, he's playing a little further left mm -hmm. with his feet and target. And there may just be a little more oil concentration in the middle where he can get away with a board or two miss left of his intended target. Love that the teammates are there getting excited. Everyone's supporting each other in this great tournament. Well, Baker's, Baker's fine. Yeah. 
Samantha Munchen in trip 10. That is a very good shot from Samantha. She made her adjustment off the 4, 7, 10 she left in the opening shot. We're going to have a good match here. Absolutely. So far, so good. Nice ball reaction from Miss Munch out of Oshkosh. And she's not born. Spending time with her family and friends. Oh. His, well, that's okay. Take a peek at his approach. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Out of Richfield. Yeah. Steve Monson. And he rips it at the bottom. Man. He got that a little bit right and let that ball and hand action make that ball recover. You let the ball do the work. In, in theory, say. yes. Phil Brylo joins us lame side as Team Jamrose is up here. Yeah, Mike Jamrose, a recent inductee into the Greater Milwaukee Bowling Association Hall of Fame. Other members of his class were Henry Teets, who you saw recently at the Action Heating Cooling Shootout. And uh, our own Joe Serrano in the booth here, also inducted for meritorious service as well. Thank you, Phil. And uh, I saw Mike take care of that seven yeah, pin with a nice absolutely. little messenger. Look at the replay chopping here. Chopping it down. Look at that. Do, no. they, do they call that Hall of Fame carry, Joey? Do you uh, get that often? I've heard it called many things. <laughs> or a Hall of Fame break. <laughs> Back to Team Brunig here. But we all know we make our own breaks, both good and bad. Absolutely. Great follow through to the right again. That's three picture perfect shots from Bull. And right up the middle. Well, he's playing inside yeah. because I don't think he wants to circle the ball much. He wants to play a more direct line. As, as Phil was mentioning earlier, as we get going here, uh, halfway through our game, we're already starting to see some transition, but not in Bo's line. Well, no, I think he's he's there by himself. Yeah, yep. And that's what you have to do sometimes. You either go with the team or you find your own way. All depends how you want to break down the lane. And Dylan knows this is a big shot right here to keep pace. Just smooth. Oh. But you can't get away with that. No, he leaves it with a, a good 10 pin. And all you can do sometimes is execute to the best of your ability and you can't always control that pinfall. Sometimes it's just too good. Maybe yeah. a slight adjustment in the wrist or the way you release the ball. See, he thought he, he had yeah, it. He yep. thought he had it. And, and there was no deflection uh, from the ball upon entry. It just, six pin just went right around it. That's the joy of bowling. And the pain of bowling. <laughs> right, a, a humbling reminder that you must still pick up those spares, though. Or those are just as important as the strike. Very good spirit conversion. Mm -hmm. We do have ourselves a game here, Joey. Through seven. Team Jamrose. 143. Team Bruni making it look plenty nice out there. Oh, oh boy. Clock it all the way I again. thought that was going to get away from him and maybe go Brooklyn. You know, they could go off the sheet, Team Brunig, for 279. That would be an impressive opening round game here. And Samantha struck last time up. Tenth annual Junior Hall of Fame tournament. Catches a break. Carries the Wally. <laughs> That's a good shot. That's a nice loose swing and a good roll on the ball. Helps those pins dance around like that. Take a look at the replay of Sam's ball here. Just a, just a little light, but as you said, had enough pin action to get the job done. Coming down to crunch time now. Ooh, got a break. He rolled the two pins got a forward. Break. That could have been a dinner bucket as his teammates kind of uh, giggle I, their way. I don't know if we'll see it on the replay. A little bit of skid out there. Looked like the ball had some difficulty deciding what it was going to do. Well, yeah. But, again, it is a strike. Strike's a strike, And Joey. it did hit the 1-3, so yeah. you can't call that a bad shot <laughs> as, as Mike buries it knee-deep. Mike has a pretty strong game. Solid at the line. Just enough heavy roll off those fingers. Does not use finger inserts. No finger inserts. No, no. He's got enough power and hand action. His arms are as strong as legs. That is uh, unique for this day and age. Most bowlers using their grips. Well, the majority do, sure, mm -hmm. but a lot of top-level players with 
strong hand action at release find no need for inserts. Interesting. And they, they don't need that extra hang time. Perhaps they do sometimes in instances like this where you get too much power. Well, it, it could be, but you know, Mike sees that's his only bad shot this game, but mm -hmm. they're going to finish with a right near 210 if he makes this. And 209 game. 209. Good game, but pretty far behind Team Brew. Yeah, they uh, have been on pace here with the exception of the third frame. They had their nine spare there. They have right, been that's where Steve left the four pin, yeah. which obviously could have fallen. Bull has been picture perfect. Joey, as you were saying, a 279 pace here. If we go off the sheet. Bull One. starts with his right foot. He's a four-step approach. Ooh, and the double bounce. But the, the power he creates with that follow-through going left, or I'm sorry, to the right, mm -hmm. allows his hand to come around the side of that ball and not pull it. Over to Phil Brylow, who joins us lane side. Phil? Yeah, with Team Bruni here possibly shooting 279, that could be a 70-pin deficit for Team Jamrose going into the second game. It was two-game total match, but Mike Jamrose has been part of a team that's had a bigger comeback before. Back in 2014 at the Action Team Shootout, Mike Jamrose and his team, the Brunswick Horsemen, were down 90 pins after the first game of a two-game total match. Came back and shot 279 to take the match and advance to the championship that time. So I'm sure Mike will be giving his team a pep talk and let them know that, hey, they may have shot 279 against us, but they have to switch lanes and we're not out of this yet. Bo with another solid strike there up the middle. Thank you, Phil. So their goal should be shooting 231 because then they <laughs> cannot lose because there's just not enough pins. You can't shoot 301 and get away with it. See if we can get a 279 here. Team Brunig. Beautiful. Well, that's, he's got a nice beautiful. Season. They're going to be hard to beat. 279 to 209 in this opening match. More from AMF Bolero here in Wauwatosa. This is the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. Welcome back to the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, the location. Joey, the opening round there, 279 to 209. Impressive. A, a nice little 70-pin cushion going into game two, but you know as well as I do, a pair of lanes does not necessarily play the same from one lane to the other. No, absolutely not. Van McNeil alongside Joey Sorar. Phil Brylow joins us lane side in just a moment. After a 279 game, you have to See stay focused. Big poster of Jason Belmonte in the background <laughs> watching the action with us. Well, Bull hasn't skipped the beat. No, not at all. Still keeping his line, keeping that ball speed up, and continuing to strike. Talking about Jason Belmonte staring you down as you're bowling. Could be a little intimidating there to some of these kids. Yes, it could. Mike has a little, little hop at the foul line. And, and back, again, that's how yeah. he ended back to back round two, one. Two, four, seven. Yeah. He didn't make the first one. Let's see if he goes to school on this and makes a small adjustment. At that point, Joey, as you drill up balls here, what do you think? Is it time for a ball change? or? Well, if, it, if that air shot wasn't created by his stick or hop at the foul line, a ball change could be in order, or a, a move with feet and target. I'm sure his wheels are turning up upstairs, and he's trying to figure mm -hmm. it out quickly. And yeah. that ball gets away. Adam Cook out of Sussex, and uh, perhaps uh, just a miss of target. Maybe got a little too relaxed there during the break. But 14 years old here. When he's not bowling, he's hanging out at the movies or with friends. And of course, he'd like to thank Bo, his pro, and Steve Monson, and his parents, and Stephen's parents as well as Adam Converse, the spare. And that is not an easy spare conversion. No. You need to hit that hip pin just right on the left because 
There's times if you hit it a little too firm on the left, you leave that seven. Right. Right. Over to Team Jamrose again here. Dylan with the smooth release. Let's see if he puts it in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Look at his elbow got a little out. Did you mm -hmm. notice that? And you just lose that little bit of leverage at release and the ball doesn't quite make the corner. Could have something to do with the time between the commercial break and, Could be. and, Could and be. the uh, transition here as Phil was talking about in the lanes earlier. And when we talk transition, maybe we should explain that more in yeah. detail yeah. For, for our listeners. Uh, these balls remove lane oil. Mm -hmm. Every shot they throw, oil is removed from the lane. When they throw spares, they're carrying oil down. So we have oil being removed from the first 40 feet or so of the oil pattern, yet we have oil being carried down near the pins. So all of a sudden the ball can hook earlier and not finish as strong. Other things that you have to keep in mind as you go through a game here, because you can start with the ball, but by the end of that game, that lane can be completely different. Without question. And that's true on both sport conditions and house conditions. Mm-hmm. The special Junior Hall of Fame pattern proving uh, not to be too troublesome just yet for some of these bowlers here as we see another pocket strike there. Samantha Munch back up from Oshkosh for Team Jam Rose. You can tell they're focusing and concentrating on each and every shot. Very good shot for Samantha. And her best ball of the day so far here on television. Solid pocket strike. The ball has yet not to strike. Let's see if he can stay perfect. Talking about transition, Bo has been in a land all by himself, right up the middle. Lots of ball speed. Well, a little more speed than the kids, which is which is normal for someone of Bo's age. Solid game at the foul line. Pretty consistent follow through. Lots of power. Like and a you know, machine. You know, every ball is finishing right behind like that eight pin. A machine. Let's see if. When Dennis Jarris was in his prime, you know what his nickname was when mm -hmm. he was on Bowling with the Champs what for a number that? of years? Mm -hmm. La Machine. La Machine. <laughs> and he is not French. Back to Team Jamrose. Mike is back in the saddle. And we are back right after this short break, the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament from AMF Bolero here in Wauwatosa continues next. providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our Wall of Fame and our current specials at bpsmilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament here at AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. Van McNeil alongside Joe Serrar and Phil Brylo who joins us lane side. Phil? Yeah, you look at some of the action earlier today. You saw Tony Rubentini there, one of the 900 shooters from the state of Wisconsin. And of course, right there you saw Linda Barnes, Linda wife of Chris, USBC Hall of Famer in her own right, and a big supporter of the Junior Diabetes Research Foundation. We'll have a nice piece about that after the semifinal match is complete. A high hit here for Adam Cook as we return to action. Yeah, Adam's temporarily lost the pocket. Prior to that high shot right here, he left a one, two, four, seven. So he's gonna have to readjust his line slightly as he makes the spur. So they still hold a, a lead going in, but this game rather close. Not like that first game, 279 to 209. Hard to dig out for that much of a deficit. And hard to follow that with another good game. Yeah. Sometimes you relax a little bit when you got the big lead or the cushion. I love Dylan's release here, nice and smooth. Yeah, he 
He didn't have that elbow bounce out as no, much there. Not, not like his last the throw. High hard one, and that's a big double. They're going to need more than just a double though to make up those pins. Direct into the pocket, knocks all ten. So their max score, if my math is correct, if they strike out Dylan's team, that it would be 268. 268 pace for if, if Team Jamrose. If they go off the sheet, right, right. A little wide and leaves a bucket. Got so away from Team there. Brunig not striking at will as they did in game one. And this is no gimme. No, not at all. We join Phil Brylo, lane side, as we look at that light hit. Phil, what's going on? Yeah, Joey, it just looks like the two young players on Team Bruni just a little defensive coming out of the uh, commercial break. And, you know, you've mentioned it more than once in the telecast. You, you can't be defensive in bowling. And right now, the spare here is huge for the team. And oh. that's really changing the face of things right now, Joe, with that no open frame. Well, yes, it is. And, and Bowl, again, showing his experience, has not missed a beat. And the, the pattern may be a little different where the kids are. We, we have to give them that. But uh, you can't bowl cautiously either with a lead or from behind. You always have to attack, attack, attack. Samantha about to do that here on this Junior Hall of Fame oil pattern. A great shot from Samantha. And Team Jamrose is coming along here. Yeah, Joey, they've cut that lead in half. In the beginning of this game, and now with the open frame, if they can keep stringing strikes here, Team Brunig is really going to be in trouble. Team Jamro's the hot hand right now. All right, well, this is almost an automatic here, as we know Bo has yet not to strike. Playing up the middle. Every ball, high flush, finishing right behind the eight pin. And another picture perfect shot. Bo has not missed all day here. Bo is making it look easy, isn't he? He is. Absolutely. Mike Jamos looking to get back on the horse here. Had some troubles earlier. He made the adjustments. And being one of the horsemen, getting back on the horse should be easy for Mike. <laughs> and, uh, oh, here comes that messenger. Does it get it? Uh, no, he, he touched it a little bit. but They was, wanted it. Yeah, that was a good shot. Mike knows a very important shot because that ends their string. And anytime you get a nine spare between strikes, you have just lost 21 pins to your potential score. Every pin matters, as they say. Yeah, he's very disappointed there, but he will make the spare and move on. That's all we can do. The conversion? Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Never a doubt. <laughs> Never a doubt. Some players are direct to the pin. Others. Right. And, and on a lot of house conditions, a lot of players like to just kind of freewheel it and mm -hmm. let, let the lane bring it in because they know there's plenty of friction on the outside boards. And uh, take the scenic route, so to speak, Adam to Cook, make those spares. Adam Cook out of Sussex trying to find that pocket again. Uh, he's had some trouble here his last few throws. Seems like Bo's on a different lane than the other kids, but but we know it's basically where he's playing, mm -hmm. some of his experience. But uh, yeah. he, he knew right away. Yeah. He, he knew you better stay out, and it did not. But you make your spare and you move on. But here's where the dilemma is. Let's mm -hmm. say both kids know they need to move left. They don't have enough hand or enough hook on the ball to be successful left. They're gonna stay where they are. Hey guys, we got a foul there by Adam. Good catch, Phil. So, yeah, so watch the replay here. You can see his foot right oh, on top of the that. line. That buzzer goes off, and now this match is really close. If Dylan can strike here, it's less than 20 pins for the difference in the match. So that foul counts as an open. Yes, it does. Oh, my goodness. You get zero for the frame when you foul. And we, we saw he does not have a slide. He has a long, large step. Mm -hmm. Big strike for Team Jam Rose. And that expression of emotion. Looking to put it away here after opening the door there. My goodness. Well, Steve knows the importance of this shot. And you definitely don't want to lose a match when you have a 70-pin push. But gets a lucky break here well, that's on power. a light hit. That, that is, that's a good release and power <laughs> creating that lucky break, but uh, that was big. 
And if that four pin stands, it's another potential lift. Right. And could have opened the door the other way here. So if Samantha knows if she can strike here, she sets up teammate Mike Jamos in the tent. And, and she that's does. picture perfect. 15 year old Samantha Munch out of Oshkosh. Well, right now, gentlemen, here's the situation. Bo Brunig needs the first strike and good count here in the 10th frame to lock up the advantage for his team and get him into the championship match against Team Mills. The way he's both throwing the ball, you got to make that a, a favored situation right now. So if he doesn't strike, Team Jamrose could strike out to win. Yes. Correct. But since Bo has struck every shot prior to this. It's been automatic all day, up the middle, that's his line. And again, right behind the eight pin, that's just pure consistency, power, experience. To become a bowler of that caliber, to just repeat and become automatic like that is quite the discipline. Well, it takes a lot of hard work, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of discipline, yeah. like you said. Uh, you get out of bowling what you put into it. Right. The more time and energy and focus you put into the sport, potentially you're going to see rewards. But, I mean, Bo's been a long time Madison standout, let's say. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and he's living in Illinois now, I believe. I'm sure he's making a mark down there as well. So another big shot. Great follow through. Trip 10. That may sell some motive primal fears. Absolutely. I think so. Motive. I think so. Their max score would be 199, is that correct? Yes. 199 pace. Bo goes off the sheet here. Well, he's got the first two. Every shot he's thrown today has been a strike, here on TV at least. Hey, Joey, if you're Bo right now, area check or just stay on your line? Stay on your line. And he does. Oh. And creeps high, oh. leaves a 4-6, but if you're going to leave that, the fill ball is obviously the best place to leave it. Absolutely. If I can borrow Phil Brylow's name. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Jamrose looking to strike here. Man, and he's yeah, had and nothing but trouble out on that line. Well, compared to the other lane, you're right. That, that a little more friction, I think he's seeing. And Phil is lane side. Yeah, good showing today by Team Jamrose. 36 teams on this Junior Hall of Fame scratch event. Third place finish is getting net the two youth bowlers a $300 scholarship apiece, plus a 900 global three ball tote bag. So not a bad haul. And uh, once again, I gotta thank all these sponsors that Shannon Lebinski and her staff has put together here with the Junior Hall of Fame to get these prizes for the kids. And we'll talk a little bit more about Shannon and her efforts in the next match. All right, thank you, Phil. There you see it, our two game totals. Team Brunig with a total of 476, while Team Jamrose only with a 441. We've got more from AMF Bolero Lanes here in Wauwatosa. You are watching the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. The night prior to the Junior Hall of Fame tournament, the inaugural Celebrity JDRF Bowling event was held at Classic Lanes in Greenfield. This event had a very unique format. Teams of four signed up they had a chance to bowl one of the four celebrities that were available for this Junior Diabetes Research Foundation fundraiser. The celebrity score was added to the four-person team score to determine the top finishers in the event. The celebrities in the event included USBC Hall of Famer Gail Myers Jr., soon-to-be Hall of Famer Andy Mills, destined to be in the Hall of Fame Dave Veras, and Strikeout Diabetes founder, Linda Barnes. 
One of Linda's sons was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at an early age, and we asked Linda how that got her involved with the JDRF nationally. Uh, Troy was diagnosed in 2008 with type 1 diabetes, and after about eight, nine months, I realized that I couldn't kiss it and make it go away. Uh, I walked into the Dallas chapter, uh, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation in Dallas, and asked, how do I help? What can I do? Uh, we started a, a strikeout diabetes program, which has now raised over $400,000. And with the help of people like Shannon Lubinsky and their crew, um, the Junior Hall of Fame tournament, um, you know, we just keep raising money in hopes for a cure. Uh, no child should have to deal with what type 1 does to them, child or adult for that matter. Um, it's a tough disease, and the hopes that JDRF brings to me is that one day my child won't have to deal with that on a daily basis. Not just bowling celebrities supporting the cause, our own Van McNeil from B93.3 out throwing strikes, helping to raise some money for the JDRF. And Classic Lane's Greenfield owner, Gina Daraszewski, helping out with the fundraising efforts, donating all the bowling for the tournament. And there was a big raffle held during the event. Lots of bowling related prizes given away, but also some prizes not necessarily related to the sport. Thanks to those raffles and all the support of the bowlers, over $2,000 was raised to give to the JDRF. If you're looking for additional information about the Junior Diabetes Research Foundation, just go to jdf.org. Join us back after this short break for more of the 2016 Junior Hall of Fame Tournament from AMF Bolero in Wauwatosa. Hello and welcome back to the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament here at AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. There you see the scores, 476 to 441, our first round of action. Now on to our championship matches. Team Mills takes on Team Brunig. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brylow. Jo Joey Sawar will join us lane side in just a moment. Phil, the championship match here. And pretty interesting as the adult winners the last two years facing off, obviously with different team members as these youth bowlers sign up as a doubles team and then are paired with the adult partner to make this trios event. And the stalking style of one Andy Mills starts with a strike. Solid pocket strike from Andy Mills. And yeah, there's a little extra pride on the line between Bo Bruning and Andy Mills here. <laughs> as you mentioned, Van, 10 years this event's been going yes. on. No one has ever repeated as champion as an adult, so it's going to be interesting to see which one of our adults here is going to lead their team to victory and the $400 per bowler scholarship prize. The only shot Andy Brunig here, or as uh, Bo Brunig, has uh, thrown was uh, an eight count in the tenth frame of the last game. Otherwise, Bo has been automatic and he's right back on the horse again. Yeah, just locked in Connor Kotke out of Illinois. Both Kotke and Zenner on this team out Ooh. of south of the border and a little high for Connor there, leaving just a six pin lucky in the high hit. Again, could it be uh, a little bit of the nerves going on here under the television lights? Well, it's the first time for Connor we've seen Richie Zenner under our tournament lights here before on TV. But uh, only one prior appearance for Richie Zenner. And you got to figure with Adam Cock and Steve Monson both being comfortable. Andy struggling uh, earlier in the game. Seems to have found his shot a little high there on entry, but uh, was able to mix up the pins for another strike. Yeah, Andy, pardon me, Adam Cook right there. Adam, yes gets the break and the high hit. You watch him trip out the four, the nine, and the 10 in an early double. And once again, Team Bruni getting out to an early lead in the match. We saw that in our semifinal against Team Jamrose. Richie Zenner out of Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. The southpaw with a powerful strike there. 
And he's playing a pretty similar line to what we saw Mike Jamrose play in our semifinal match. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be too much of an oil depletion problem for Zenner. And with his high ball speed and good size rev rate, he should be able to keep that ball in play pretty well all afternoon long. That could have been the demise of Mike Jamrose was ball speed. He, like you said, along that same line here. But continuing on with a nice, solid pocket strike. And I think Team Bruni is finding their comfort level under the TV lights. Those extra couple of games. Mm -hmm. Makes all the difference sometimes. Exactly. You get in your own little zone. You're used to the pressure out there already. And you know, the toughest match sometimes to win is a championship match. If you're the top seed, you have to sit around and wait for the first couple of matches to get done. Lane's got to change a little bit before you get on for your practice. And next thing you know, you, you might be searching a little bit for a line that hasn't been a problem for Andy Mills so far. Sporting the Junior Hall of Fame commemorative shirt. Nice strike there from Andy. Yeah, always a great job by Shannon Lubinsky and her staff on mm -hmm. those commemorative shirts for the bowlers and their families as well. As we see one of our sponsors' logos up there, Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Phil, that was a beautiful piece on the tournament there the night prior to this. Yeah, and it was nice that uh, you know, $2,000 raised for the Junior Diabetes Research Foundation, and we know it's a big cause of Linda Barnes. You see mm -hmm. Linda just behind Bo's right shoulder is still. She hasn't been in the tournament for a while, knocked out a little earlier than expected, but Linda's here cheering all of our players on. Bo, right up the middle. Uh-oh. A little light uh, seems to have missed his line just a little bit. Could have a play in transition here as we move along. Yeah, he looked pretty happy with it out of his hand. You just watched the reaction, the deflection going yeah. through. Ball a little too heavy on the three pin part of the one three pocket and you get that extra deflection. His teammates not too concerned though. You see the round of applause <laughs> just pick it up and stay clean. They do have the early lead. They have to be saying bow is automatic he's gonna strike every time he gets up there wasn't the case in this instance but you do pick up your 10 pin and we take a break more of the championship match as we continue here at amf bolero lanes in wauwatosa this is the 10th annual junior hall of fame bowling tournament why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at castle lanes because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. Welcome back to the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament here at AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brylow. Joey Serrar joins us lane side in just a moment. Phil? Yeah, looking at some of the action earlier today here. Junior Hall of Fame event. 99 teams in total entered. There were 36 entered on the scratch side. The rest entered on the future stars side. And Van, you had a chance to bowl with a couple of the future stars of the sport as well earlier today in this event. Absolutely. My friends Daniel and Bryce, who bowl at Brown Deer Lanes over there, we had just made the first cut. Uh, wasn't too much of a deficit to advance uh, unless we had. Uh, bakered out 300s, uh, which was not the case, but uh, still had a great time, and uh, what, what a great organization, and, and Shannon Lebisky and all the great things that she does 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely, and, and we mentioned some of the scholarships awards already won by players today. Over $10,000 in scholarships total, plus the extra bonus merchandise prizes these young players are receiving today. It's just, it's one of the best events in Wisconsin. There's two events I always make sure I'm at mm -hmm. every year. This is one of them, the other one, the Sean Yona Memorial up in Sheboygan. Adam Cook getting a break there, coming in a little high on entry, was able to uh, knock out that eight pin to avoid the uh, split there. Yeah, you see that ball finishing late, four slices off, takes out that nine pin. You see the teammates on the bench there with Steve and Bo going, all right, yep. fine. Hold on, everything's good. Yeah, they knew the break was there, the ball was a little high, and it's not unusual nowadays to see with some of these power players, you see a solid seven nine, the ball right. slices so fast through the high pocket hit for the righties that they end up leaving a split with it. No problem on the spare for Adam. Over to Team Mills here. And from Illinois. We've seen him on these broadcasts before. Yeah. Richie Zenner, smooth lefty. 
See that shoulder nice and relaxed to start with? A little, a little off balance. A little bit of a tug there. You noticed it too in the release uh, in result. Yeah, and sometimes, the split here. Yeah, sometimes these young bowlers, they get so mm -hmm. amped up that they start their approach to the line and they kind of hold on to the ball a little long on the push away. Mm -hmm. And with that delay, they kind of force the ball through at the bottom. You saw Richie off balance at the bottom. He knew he was going to be close to the pocket. He didn't think he deserved that 6-8, but unfortunately the pins say otherwise. Could have something to do with their first game under the TV lights here. Of course, he's been in this situation before, but uh, sitting uh, and, and warming up in, in, in the back is different than being out here and bowling in it. Well, in the rhythm of three-person Baker. A lot yeah. of events yeah. these youth players have nowadays, unless they're bowling five-person team with their high schools, they're bowling individual events. So getting used to this pace of three on a team bowling in a Baker format, Sometimes it takes a little getting used to, and you can see how close yeah, center was to making that 6-8, but right now... Steve Monson out of Richfield, Wisconsin, would like to thank his parents, Scott and Jackie, partner Adam and Rich Muller for all of the equipment. Yeah. Team oh, wow. my goodness. Too good of a shot. They're at the 23-pin lead going into that shot. Really could have started working on extending it if they could have put a strike up and then started stringing on top of that. But the bad break for Monson, five slice right off the eight. Stone and eight Look at in. the reaction <laughs> by his teammates. That was the reaction we had here on the booth because it was such a pretty shot, but the ball did not deflect to take out the eight pin. Yeah, it's just amazing that a ball that's actually hooking towards uh. a pin gets stopped by the deflection of the five pin and goes straight back. But you convert the spare as any good bowler does and you continue on. Yeah. I mean, a 22 pin lead right now, solid for Team Brewery. It's not what they were out to after the first game of the semifinal no, match. No, no, but it's still within reach. It's still attainable here. Yeah. And that's the thing is that you want to keep the pressure on your opponent. You want to make it where your opponent needs to get three or four strikes in a row as a team. That's a little tough to do in Baker sometimes because that pressure of having your teammates count on you can get to be a little stressful sometimes. The Lacrosse Tribune's 2016 Bowler of the Year. Oh my goodness, that was, thought he was gonna get the 7-10 uh, split there, was able to knock out the 7-10. Yeah, you can see he wasn't happy with his release. Usually, if you leave that 7-10, you just miss the bottom of the shot a little bit. Ooh. Ball doesn't have a strong roll. You saw the 5-pin just kind of die out instead of blowing into the 7. And you can see they're not a lot of surprise. No. Glad it wasn't both, he's saying on the way back. Easy 10 pin conversion here for Andy Mills. The stalking style of Mills. That's trouble. And that slides off. Oh man. boy. Oh boy. And now the lead increases for Team Bruning while they're on the bench. And you see Bo Bruning wasting no time mm -mm. wanting to get on top of that error by Team Mills. Ready to pounce. Bo is ready to go here. Uh, it just goes to show, kids, that. The pros are human too. Yes. And you know the, these adult players with these youth bowlers are feeling the pressure. They're just bowling for pride and helping their teams win scholarship right. money. They're bowling for no benefit to themselves whatsoever with cash or prizes or anything of that nature. This is simply for the kids, and they really want to help these kids get that extra scholarship money. Unbelievable ball there from Bo right up the middle. He's been there all day, and... Uh, I've only seen two balls that he's thrown that were non-strikes. Yeah, kind of cocky, wasting no time getting up on the lane, and uh, maybe that helped his mindset a little bit. Absolutely. Just get up there, get ready to go, because that was the best shot he's thrown so far on TV. Back to Adam Cook here from Sussex. Look and, at that pin action there. Yeah, if Adam can strike here, he's going to get the lead out to over 40 pins for his team. He's putting a double on the board. Maximum score right now for Team Brunig is 257. Well, the maximum score for Team Mills is 214, and that's the way to try to put 257 on the board. A little bit of a light hit there, got away with it, and another strike for Adam Cook out of Sussex. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Bo Brunig told his young 
cohorts in crime here that uh, <laughs> try to play the light pocket hit right now. So mm -hmm. if you do pull it a little bit, you're going to keep yourself out of trouble. You're going to get nine counts. You're going to get a high four pin. You might get a ten pin. But if you look in that ball reaction, we just saw it in the replay. Uh, a little skidding out there. It almost got away from him. Not the case here as we look at Richie here on another strike. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Richie really wants that 6-8 back that he left in the sixth frame. But you can see his balance on that shot much better. Ball drives all the way through mm -hmm. and not a pin left on the deck. Richie Zenner, like to thank his mom and dad, Laura and Rich, and of course, Grandpa Bill, as everyone cheers along there. Huge shot for Monson. Keep the lead out, over 40 pins going into the 10th frame. He fell off that one a bit. Got a break though. <laughs> Steve Monson out of Richfield. 16 years old. And he's throwing some quality yeah, shots he under is. pressure so far. He is. All of these kids to be doing what they're doing under the TV lights here. A great experience that Shannon Lemitsky and everyone offers for them here at Junior Hall of Fame. As we see Andy Mills made a little bit of a change it looked like. Well, a little bit better off the hand at the line. You saw the strength of the roll when the ball made its turn down lane as it started to hook back towards the pocket. And watch the difference on this roll. You see how strong this is? No deflection where yeah. with the 7-10 you saw the big deflection. The 5 barely get knocked over. And Andy knows it was good off the hand. 10 in the pit. And he still has a chance to keep his team within a minimum of 40 pins this game. It all depends on what Bo Bernie does for his team stepping up in the 10th frame. He definitely needs another strike here. 214 the maximum for Team Mills. You apply as much pressure as you can, never quit, continue to be aggressive. Oh my goodness. And that was that was left to target. He he knew he was a bit left at the break point. And when you throw the ball that strong and you're that high in the one three pocket, no deflection off the five pin, no. five sod straight back off the nine. We saw it earlier with the stone eight, now a stone nine for Andy Mills. So we saw him miss that ten pin earlier, but not uh, not the nine pin this time around. Nope. It's 203 for their opening game of this two game total pin match. So they know they're not out of it yet. And you know, the, for Team Mills, they could be thinking to themselves, well, we're going to get the tougher lane out of the way right away. We saw in the semifinal match, mm -hmm. the lowest score each game was on that left lane. And now it's going to be up to Team Brunig to go over to the left lane and, and try to keep the lead. But like Team Jamrose had to deal with, now. These guys are dealing with a team Will uh, Mills and, and Bo. Oh my gosh, Bo looks like he pulled it there. And that one rolled up real early and uh, looking at the reaction on Bo's face, something tells me, uh, yeah, you see right there, he thought he threw it yeah. relatively well. Yeah, you so. saw Steve and Adam discussing in the background as well. Um, his ball speed, it looked like it, it dropped as well. So, well, first thing right now is cover the spare and then you can worry about making any type of adjustments on the fill ball you want to make sure you give yourself that extra shot every pin counts here in this first game too you want to go for as many as possible of course you're bowling against the other team but you're trying to accumulate as many pins as you can going into the second match here yeah you see Bo Bernie making a run down to his bowling bag getting another piece of equipment out and uh, not a bad place to try no, on, the, the, on, on the fill ball here, the fill Brylo ball. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see uh, as he switches to this piece, we'll, just, we'll see if he sticks with it going into the next game because he's going to be leaning off right. for his team on the left lane. Let's see here. Made the adjustment, went back to his line, pays off with the strike. There you have it for the first match here. 234 for Team Brunig, 203 for Team Mills. Don't you go anywhere. Round two next here at the Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament at AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. Welcome back to AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. A 31-pin lead for Team Brunig as they take down Team Mills in round one here at the Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brylo. Joe Sirock joins us lane side a little later. Gerald Mars, just one of the many, many PBA members here that joined us here in Tosa today. Absolutely, it was fun seeing Jerry here and uh, didn't quite do well enough to make it past the opening match before the TV show. 
but uh, always good seeing Jerry up north of the border. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Bo Brunig sticking with the ball he changed to on that last shot of the 10th frame. So he must have seen something with the reaction to stay happy with. But hasn't changed his line. He's been there up the middle all game long, just made the equipment change, and is right back there. Well, there's a lot of times that players will have equipment in their bowling bags, especially a tournament player like Bo or Andy. They're going to have six to eight bowling balls in their arsenal, and there's going to be two or three pieces that are going to complement each other slightly one way or another. You'll have a couple of pieces that don't hook at all or hook a lot, but then kind of your main bowling balls will be, one will be your benchmark, and one will hook a little bit more, one will hook a little less. Something tells me that that ball that Bo's using right now has the same type of reaction down lane where it starts to hook. It just doesn't do it as much as the first ball he was using. We saw it earlier too. Andy Mills made a ball change late in game one, and he continues to stick with it. It paid off with another strike rate. Adam Cook out of Sussex. Ooh, Ooh my <laughs> goodness. From goat to hero <laughs> by two pins there. What amazing carry by Cook there. Watch Look that head that. pin. Doesn't even get all the way back across the deck and the six leans on the ten. And the reaction from Bo and Steven. Unbelievable. And that gets the lead out to 41 pins early, but Connor Cocky can knock it back down to 31. He can put up a double for his team. Ready ball. Connor Kotke out of Lake Zurich, Illinois, just 17 years old. Nice strike there for Connor. You know, one of the things you hear going through the crowd when you talk to some of the celebrities and Hall of Famers of old today, Van, was these kids are way better than we were when oh. we were 16, 17, 18 years old. Absolutely. The great coaching a lot of these kids get in their high school programs and their youth programs in their own home centers is really what's making the difference nowadays as compared to 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, bowling has come a long, long way, and it's nice to see kids passionate about our sport again. Yeah. Steve making a ball change here. Steve Monson out of Richfield, Wisconsin, just 16 years old. Came up a little high here on lane 21. Look at Adam's reaction. Thought he had it. Mm. Yeah, but notice right now, make the spare. You're ahead in the match. Just keep it clean. Don't give your opponent any openings at all. And then the door opens. Oh my. Oh my. Every pin counts in any situation, even more so when you're on television. Yeah, and that's the case where you get a polyester ball, you get it in the oil early in the front part of the lane, and it gets on the track of the bowling ball, mm -hmm. and it doesn't let the ball hook down lane at all. Polyester will hook if it's dry, obviously, but if you have oil on the surface and polyester bowling balls don't have the flare that reactive resins do, uh, it doesn't get to a fresh part of the polyester ball. It just tracks over the oil and it doesn't hook. No messenger there on Team Mills' ball for Richie. Richie can see right there, not happy with the ball off the hand. A little flat beginning of the pocket. And watch the replay. The four pin just lays in the flat gutter. No chance, whatever, on the seven. It's that transition, too, that we've been talking about since game one continues to make this interesting for our bowlers out here. So Richie taking a little extra time, making sure everything's set for converting that corner pin. And you see, staying with his strike ball, a la Norm Duke. Not too many players do that nowadays, but all he has to do is flatten it out. Oh boy. <laughs> a little too close for comfort, but converts the spare dusts nonetheless. Him, yeah. Dusts himself off on the way back. <laughs> Off the approach, and yeah, that's uh, some players. It's a comfort level. Yeah, I, I did that for years, where I would just flatten my resin ball out. Now, uh, with progressing age right. and not wanting to throw Absolutely. the ball as hard, it's, I've gone to a year of things. When so. uh, when I was younger, I was able to handle that. Now it's the plastic ball direct at my spares. Well, Bruning looking to get his team back off an open frame. Oh, a little light hit, but. Gets lucky with the strike. Uh, head pin does a lot of damage on the left side of that rack. You see the four, five, and seven spin around late. Beautiful and pin action. Yes, indeed. And that's where the higher ball speeds that players like Bo can generate. Well, they'll carry an extra strike or two as compared to someone with a little slower ball speed like Andy Mills. Awesome. Andy, however, can use his angles that he generates to carry some light hits that Bo might not be able to carry. Made the adjustment earlier his unique stalking style to the foul line. And got into a little bit of trouble there. I think it looked like he missed his turn. Yep. 
Short, sweet, and simple. You miss left on this Junior Hall of Fame pattern, especially after it's got a few games of wear on it. It's going to hook up a little bit earlier and lucky to leave just the three pin gets the 10 pin out. No baby split for Mills. No, it was a 31 pin deficit heading into this final championship match here. Still attainable, but. Yeah, it's going to keep that deficit at about 31 pins yeah. with a conversion here by Mills. And another miss for Andy Mills. My goodness. We will continue with the action here from AMF Bolero Lanes in Wauwatosa. You are watching the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament. Welcome back to AMF Bolero Lanes. It has been a great day of bowling here at the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brilo. Joe Serrar joins us in a little bit. And yeah, just checking out some of the action once again from earlier today here at the Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Lots of great adult players, Hall of Famers such as Bob Greenfield here. I'm trying to get that strength <laughs> to carry the body English. Not going to let it happen, but you know, to get a 99 adult players to come out here and team up with these 99 youth doubles teams for trios. Amazing, amazing event run by Shannon Lubinsky and her staff. Absolutely. Of course, you can find out more online as we continue on here with our championship match and Adam Cook from Sussex. A high hit, but a strike. I'll tell you what, Andy Mills missing that three pin going into the commercial break and now Adam Cook putting up a double for his team. The lead's 51 pins for Team Bruning. Team Mills has really got the work cut off for them, but Connor Kaki yeah. trying to keep his team alive. Out of Lake Zurich, this game is not done yet. We saw that open earlier from Team Mills, but Connor picking up the slack with the strike. And on the commercial break here, the action fast and furious. Yeah. Bowlers wasting no time getting on the approach. But Steve Monson here looking for three in a row for Team Brewing. Out of Richfield, Brooklyn strike. Oh. A little bit of luck. A strike is a strike, Phil. Exactly, <laughs> but you go from maybe not making as big of a miss to getting a split and having your lead cut down greatly and now extending it to 61 pins in this match with only four and a half frames remaining. Uh, yeah, I can see why Team Bruning's all smiles in the back right now. It's going to be tough for Team Mills to catch up from here on out. Richie Center out of Hawthorne Woods not giving up just yet. Nice strike there from Richie. Yeah, but 51 pins. Yeah, looking at the Still score the difference here. With, with four frames to go. It's going to take a mon monumental collapse from Team Brunig to give up this Junior Hall of Fame title. And Bo has been automatic for a majority of the day here on television. Three of the balls that he's thrown on TV have been not strikes. Everything else, X's all the way. And another <laughs> strike for Bo. And it just goes to prove nowadays that sometimes you don't need to hook the whole lane. Nope to get the ball to knock all 10 pins down. That ball maybe hooked six boards in total, three out and three back. But when you're amped up like Bo Bruni is mm -hmm. right now and you know you have the line in the pocket, you just stick with it. Andy Mills sticking with the ball he changed to last game. His stalker style to the foul line and made the adjustment and too much of an adjustment went wide last ball across to the brooklyn side this one a light hit and uh you gotta say right there it's now match over for team mills and he kind of knows that there are any chance that they needed to have was counted on with a strike and now with that nine count down by over 60 pins three frames to go yeah that's that's gonna do it for sure and uh you know it meant a lot to andy not just the one with the two young players he bowled with today, but he was our defending champion from last year. So, no repeat. No repeat, but we will have our first two-time winner with Bo Brunig. Bo's team won it two years ago here at AMF Bolero. You saw both of those Junior Hall of Fame events on TV. As Adam Cook finishes it out here from Sussex. And nice, it's nice to bowl when the pressure's off. Oh, exactly. It's always <laughs> easier to, to get the ball off the hand when there's no pressure out there. And uh, some tells me, Connor Kaki here, no pressure, going to be 10 in the pit. And uh, ah, it's a scrambler, but it's still there 10 you go. down. Just 17 years old. And you know we'll see a lot of these kids back here on television real no, soon. No doubt. But uh, hey, let's give another shout out while we got time with the match in hand here. Uh, 
Shannon Lebinsky, her husband, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. And the so entire many. crew, the whole, all of the volunteers that make this possible. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of Shan's family, a lot of Stephen's family, a lot of their friends as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do so much to gather raffle prizes and run the tournament and get the bowlers organized. Scott Hunick uh, got all the bowlers organized, all 99 adult players to bowl with these youth doubles teams. And, and, and the adults are just about as difficult to deal with as the kids. <laughs> so Scott is a saint. Yes, indeed. Uh, and yeah, the bowlers just keep striking here on the way out. But once again, it's it's been great being a part for the fourth year now. Mm -hmm. on TV of this Junior Hall of Fame tournament and we're looking forward to the 2017 edition. Shannon originally last year said, yeah, this might be the last one. It's getting real busy for me. It's tough. She has two beautiful young daughters and a full-time job and, and sometimes uh, life gets in the way, yeah. but with all the help she's gotten from her tournament staff, it's going to keep going for a long, long time. And I think we can let Bo get away with one bad absolutely, shot. Absolutely, absolutely. Shannon uh, has been doing great things uh, for our bowling community here for 10 years. Uh, of course, you can find out more online at jhoft.weebly.com if you wanted to donate some prizes, find out more about what the Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament is and all the great things and money's raised that we do for these kids. It really is all about the kids here, Phil. Oh, absolutely. If you want to see any of the past editions of the Junior Hall of Fame Tournament that we had here on TV, uh, you can go to YouTube if you look for mm -hmm. EBC Productions, or you can look for Essential Bowling Concepts on YouTube as well, or just type in Junior Hall of Fame Tournament, uh, and you'll find those previous years. You can see when Andy Mills and Bo Burning won in previous years as well. Bo with another strike. The man has been automatic up the middle. And how about that $400 scholarship from Adam Cook, $400 scholarship for Steve Monson, and the, both the young men are also taking home a hammer bowling ball as well. It's a pretty solid take home for those two players. Absolutely, all donated here to the Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament. And the entry fee for these young players is only $25 a person, so if you look at the expenses of the bowling tournament mm -hmm. line inch and you know, the, the incidentals here and there, uh, not a lot of that money goes in the scholarship fund. And all the money they raise with the raffles, all the money that's raised through fundraising efforts by Shannon and her staff, uh, over $10,000 in scholarships awarded to right, the band. Right back to the kids, and that's what it's all about here. Uh, as we uh, see uh, Andy Mills here wrap things up. And uh, Andy, it's going to be a long ride home to uh, the <laughs> yeah. cross room tonight. He's going to yeah. be thinking about this one a bit, not just thinking about it for him, but thinking about it for what his young players could have. But the players are taking home $350 of scholarship money mm -hmm. and a bowling ball as well on his team. Absolutely. 2016 Tribune uh, Lacrosse uh, Bowler of the Year. Andy Mills wraps it up, but not able to get the win today. There you see it, the final score. Team Brunig with a 479 uh, game score. And uh, Team Mills with just a 418. We'll wrap it up here from AMF Bolero Lanes. Next, you're watching the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Bowling Tournament. Barbiere's Italian Inn, featured in onmilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. Providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our Wall of Fame and our current specials at bpsmilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the 10th Annual Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Van McNeil alongside Phil Brylo. What a day of bowling, Phil. And you kind of say it was the Bo Brunig show, but it wasn't just him. I mean, his teammates, Adam Cook and Steve Monson, Bo led the way. They kept following, and they threw a ton of strikes all day mm -hmm. long to take home this Junior Hall of Fame championship. That's Bo's second title as an adult, never been done here before at the tournament. And uh, Mr. Cook and Mr. Monson both taking home those $400 scholarships and those bowling balls as well. It's a pretty good day on the lanes for those young men too. We have not had a repeat champion. We had the chance here in Team Mills, but that was not the case. Well, you could tell how much Andy Mills and Bo Brunig both really wanted to take home this championship, no doubt about it, to be the first to make this achievement at such a prestigious event. And uh, unfortunately for Andy, a couple who would have thought a couple of single pins uh, was the start of the difference early between Team Mills finishing in second and Team Bruning finishing in first. But I'll tell you what, Team Bruning putting together that big string of strikes in the second game of the match against Team Mills, 
what can you say? That that's that's championship material, no doubt. Like I said, it has been an amazing day of bowling here. A very big thank you to our entire crew here and uh, everyone at AMF Bolero Lane, Shannon Lebinsky, of course. Absolutely, I want to thank Shannon for that, and uh, we're not done with the youth bowlers yet, mm -hmm. Van. I mean, our next show is going to be coming to you from our friends at Motion Plus Lanes and Catania's hosting our inaugural high school kickoff classic. And uh, I'll tell you what, Bo Brunig's mom and dad, John and Sheriff Brunig out of Sun Prairie, their teams are in that event. They're always strong. Something tells me we might see some Sun Prairie boys and girls bowling on TV on our next show. You can always find replays of our shows on YouTube. Just search Essential Bowling Concepts. To learn more about the uh, Junior Hall of Fame Tournament, J-H-O-F-T, Junior Hall of Fame Tournament dot Weebly Dot com. For Phil Brylo, Joe Serrar, and the entire crew here at AMF Bolero Lanes, my name is Van McNeil, and thank you for watching.